Hi folks, Matt Easton, Scholar Gladiatoria here. Um, so, an issue that I feel is worth mentioning, uh, especially in the run-up to my own event, Fight Camp, which is in uh, the middle of August this year, and the middle of August every year in fact, um, is the issue of points on swords used for sparring. Okay, so, uh, clearly, um, when we use uh, blunted swords for sparring in HEMA, uh, they have blunt tips on them. Okay, um, but back in the old days, what that usually entailed was a point, someone like this, and this is an old training sword of mine that I don't really use anymore because I've got better ones now. Um, but if you look at that point there, you can hopefully see that it's essentially just a rounded point. Okay, um, and that in the old days was deemed good enough. It is not good enough, unfortunately, for HEMA sparring, in my opinion. Um, I do know that there are some groups out there still using uh, points like this and still using them in, in tournaments at some events and so on, but I will not allow them at Fight Camp for the very simple reason that I have seen points like this go through too many things. I have seen them go through uh, gambesons, that is padded jackets used for, for fencing. I've seen them uh, break a fencing mask um, mesh. Um, and I've seen them go through, uh, and I've certainly read about some nasty incidences of them going through gloves as well. Okay, um, a point like this might not look sharp, and technically I suppose it's not sharp. However, it's important to state that for uh, quite a few periods in history, a, a tip like this, all but sharpened, was considered good enough for war, okay? And I guarantee you that if you take a point like that, even if that's blunt and I can push, I can apply force to the blade in my hand, and it leaves an indent on my hand, it's not very comfortable, but it doesn't penetrate my hand. If you use that in a fighting situation, you ram that into someone's torso or face, it will go through them, okay? And that means it will go through protective gear as well. It will go through leather, it will go through um, padded garments like gambesons, and it will, if you're unlucky, go through uh, the mesh, the steel mesh of a fencing mask. Okay, these are not safe for HEMA sparring. They are used. Tips like this are used in reenactment, and that's why they are perhaps still tolerated in some quarters in HEMA, and why they're what we used to use in HEMA as normal. Uh, but the fact is, in reenactment fighting, they're pulling all of their blows. And many reenactment groups don't allow any thrusts at all, and uh, most of them don't allow any thrusts, um, certainly at the face, because of course they're not wearing fencing masks, they're wearing helmets at best. So the fact is that a weapon that is safe for reenactment is not necessarily, and is in my opinion almost never, safe for HEMA sparring. Um, on the, que on the point about that uh, blunt tip, I would just give an example. <coughs> so here we have a type of, I've shown this before, this is the uh, Deltin St. Morris sword. Uh, but this type of um, medieval sword with a broad blade and what we call a spatulate tip. That is a fairly rounded looking tip. Now this one is actually sharpened and that will easily go into someone or something. Um, I could stick it in a log, stick it in a tree and it would stick there and equally you could stick it through a person or through uh, padded armour and it will burst the links of mail. Okay? Um, and in the Dark Ages, so called Dark Ages, um, and in fact the, um, even with Roman Sparta to an extent and then right the way through to about the, about the 13th century, this was the typical kind of broadsword or single handed sword point. Okay, and used on the earliest longswords as well. And that was considered good enough to kill people with. It's a good, strong, robust point. It doesn't have to be incredibly pointy to go through someone or something. Okay? It just needs to be edged all around. And in fact, as I've mentioned, even the ones that are blunted uh, for kind of reenactment use, even they can be lethal, potentially lethal. Okay? So what do we use? Well, what, um, what is a rule at Fight Camp and a rule in my club um, and, and I would consider should be a rule for all of uh, HEMA practitioners is a form of um, metallic tip that is specifically designed to prevent penetration. I'll give two examples, okay? So, the first one is uh, Hanway, very obligingly, on their practice rapiers. So here we've got the practical rapier. Um, introduced this uh, kind of nail, uh, nail tip. So it's literally like the end of a, the head of a nail that you'd hammer into wood. And it's uh, solid forged, one solid piece, 
oval, there's no way on earth that's ever going to penetrate someone unless the blade breaks and then of course you end, might end up with a, a sharp bit. But the, the point itself is not going to go through anything. And <clears throat> I do know that some, some rapiers out there uh, come with just a plain squared off cut end. And I know that darkwood are an example of that. And most people are using darkwood rapiers with a rubber tip on the end. Now I would say I've seen this happen twice now where the rubber tip has split um, and in one case the um, square end of the flat blade penetrated a glove and caused an injury. In the other case no injury was caused. However it, it could have been if, the, if they'd been more unlucky. So I do not trust and uh, those squared off tips like you find on standard darkwoods I do not trust them alone and I do not trust a rubber tip. A rubber tip can and will occasionally break and that leaves you with just a squared off end on what is essentially a very narrow blade and is much smaller than what I showed with the longsword before and the longsword will easily penetrate someone, this will penetrate someone as well. The only thing preventing it is the flex of the blade, okay? And you can't always rely on that. When you hit someone square on, especially in the hand or in a crevice where the point gets stuck, it will occasionally penetrate and hands, hands and under fencing masks are particularly vulnerable in that regard. And um, lastly, I'll show you my preferred uh, solution and this is the uh, soon to be publicly released um, new version of the Eastern uh, Gymnasium Sabre which will be sold by the HEMA shop and I'll talk about that more in another video to come. Uh, but And these are the same types of tips as Peter Regnier uses on his feathers. Uh, and on the Eastern Saber which I designed uh, for him as well and which he sells um, and I hope you can see that that is a rolled forged tip so the tip is completely integral to the blade it is completely round and smooth and it also has the advantage of course of being hollow which means you're not carrying any extra weight at the tip it doesn't make the tip uh, too weighty, doesn't make it hit harder, it doesn't make the blade more floppy because it's carrying more uh, weight at the end. Um, so to me that's a kind of perfect economical solution. I do know that some makers like uh, Insifer for example use a, uh, a sort of flared but solid tip at the end. That's fine, that's in safety terms that's exactly the same. The only reason I wouldn't like that so much is simply because it's solid and therefore you've got more mass at the tip. I prefer the rolled one because it's uh, hollow and therefore you're not carrying extra mass at the tip. Um, but um, these are these um, metallic tips, solid tips, are what I would prefer on all HEMA training swords used for sparring. Um, if you don't have one of those, if you have a dark wood, then at fight camp, for example, what we require is that a, um, a solid metallic tip is added over the top of the squared off flat tip of the blade. So for an example you could use um, a firearm cartridge, for example a, a, a 303 caliber or perhaps a point, you know, uh, 0.56, um, uh, 5.56 sorry millimeter, uh, that kind of rifle, usually rifle size caliber um, round, you can actually put one of those over the tip of your darkwood and then tape it on with electrical tape and that is far stronger than the rubber blunt and uh, clearly it's never going to split like the rubber blunt will and it's not really much heavier, it's hollow so it's not really much heavier than the rubber blunt either uh, but for me all HEMA swords should have this type of end uh, either rolled forged or uh, nail forged i.e. flat um, like I showed on the Hamway forged or just flared and solid forged okay this is what we should be aiming towards in my opinion cheers